even though the nights are drawing in now and it's getting quite cold, I've still been catching a few from the notoriously deep Bundy's pit. It all started a couple of weeks ago. Um, it, was a, it was the day after my birthday and I got down here feeling a little bit worse for wear after, after going out the night before. And I, I was struggling to make my mind up between two swims. There was one swim right on the end of the wind and it, it, it was a good wind as well, pushing in there probably about 20 miles an hour, something like that. Um, I couldn't work out whether to, to drop in that swim known as the winters or get on the back of it. And uh, after, after a while of walking around and, and weighing up the situation, I decided to drop in on the back of it and there'd been a swim called the car park swim. One, because it was a little bit easier to fish, but two, I'd always done better off the back of the wind in, in, in the colder weather. So I got the rods out for the night, I had a couple of liners in the night, but nothing, uh, nothing materialised. And then just after dawn, um, I got a bite, you know, a positive bite. It turned out to be a rather, rather fat rotund 27 pound common. Nothing happened for the rest of the day really, didn't really see a great deal. Uh, so I got the rods back out for the night in the same swim. And the following morning, it was pretty much a, a mirror image situation. Just got light, just watching the kingfisher sitting on the, on the rod, and away it went. Uh, this time it turned out to be a 34 mirror. Real nice looking fish, a cracking fish. So then the following week, we got back down again. And you know, I walked around for a couple of hours trying to work out where to fish. I didn't really see any signs of fish. Uh, nothing was particularly happening. So I decided to drop back into the, the swim I fished the week before, mainly because not a great deal had been out and you know nothing was really happening down here. So I thought, well, maybe I'm onto something here. So I dropped back into the swim, did 24 hours in the swim without so much as a liner, got nothing at all really. Uh, I'd, I'd seen a couple of fish not a million miles away, but they weren't over me. They were, they were sort of out in the deeper water in the 50s, where I was fishing sort of uh, on either on the shelf or on the base of the shelf. Um, I needed to nip down the shop because I'd, I'd forgotten to milk like an idiot and I was, uh, I was drinking black tea. So I decided, right, it, you know, in, instead of baiting up in the evening sort of time when, when the fish seemed to be most active, I'd, I'd bait up uh, mid-afternoon just before I went down the shops. So I stuck pretty much everything I had in left, which was about another five, six kilo of boiling. Because, you know, when they're on it down here, they're really on it. So I stuck all the bait in, nipped down the shop, got myself some milk, got back to the lake, had a bit of a walk around. And when I was around the far side, the, the sun was really beating into the snags. And I had a quick look and I saw this big black shape in the snags and I, I'd wondered if it were the, um, the black common which hadn't been out for three and a half years. Um, so I was, I, was, I was a bit curious to whether that fish was, was still going or not. So I quickly ran back round to my swim, grabbed my little underwater camera and the uh, uh, storm pole and went back round to the snags. When I got back round there I could, I could see a few fish milling around the snags but I couldn't see this big black one that I was, I was looking at earlier. So I pointed the underwater camera you know, right down and I could see quite a few fish milling around in the snags and I was sort of half debating whether to move around onto them or not but because I put in pretty much all the bait I had left and uh, the fish do respond to a baited area in it I decided to stay put in the swim um, so I got back round to the swim got all three rods back out the, the third rod couldn't get it in the right position on, you know, with, with, the, with the rig landing properly so it took me three casts and on the third cast went right in position the, the rig looked untangled when it hit the water landed with a nice little donk and didn't roll down the shelf Ah, that's it. Put the rod down uh, on the buzzer, just sort of sorting the spool out, and the tip just went flying round. I thought, oh, it's, it's got to be a pike. You know, a pike's just sort of seen something in the water, something travelling through the water, and then uh, gone down on my bright pop up and um, and had it. Um, so I hit into it, and the initial run was, you know, it was quite an aggressive run. I thought, yeah, it's probably a pike. Then after a couple of seconds, it started plodding and just staying low. I thought, oh, it's ain't a pike. Um, the fight went on for about five or six minutes um, and I eventually just got it over the net just lifting it on the, and it was just balancing on the net cord when it decided to turn and, and it, was, it was just there right teetering on the on the edge and it just flopped over and went back into the lake luckily the hook stayed firm but I, I was playing it out thinking is, is this going to be one of these hard luck stories where the hook pops out and you know I, I end up losing a big fish which it, which it obviously was but I played it out for another couple of minutes and this time I managed to get it in the net and lift the net cord just before it had a chance to bolt back into the lake I could see it was one of the good ones. I weren't sure which one because you know they, they do look rather similar in it, you know the big two or three fish. But I knew it was one of the big ones. Lifted it up on the bank, had a quick look at it, and I could see it was a fish called Holden the Dorsal. Uh, its top weight was about 43 in the past, so uh, really pleased to catch one absolutely cracking looking fish. Um, lifted up on the scales, it went 45-6. Really, really pleased with that weight. You know another mid, uh, another mid 40. Um, unfortunately, the video footage didn't turn out for whatever reason, which I'm a little bit gutted about, but I know, at least I got some decent shots. Uh, got the rod back on the spot, and then just after dark, well, probably a few hours after dark, about 
eight o'clock at night, rod went again, 18 pound common. Um, got the rod back out there, uh, and again, it ripped off again, ran about midnight, I think it was, this time with a 30, 30 pound eight ounces. Um, so it was turning into quite a productive session. Uh, and then at about two in the morning, one of the other rods ripped off, um, fished into the deeper water. That was a, it was probably a scrape of 20 if I'm honest. So I'd had literally no sleep during the night. Um, and then just into dawn, one of the other rods went, and it was, I, I could tell this was a little bit bigger fish than the previous three. And uh, yeah, just, just playing it out, and uh, it, it didn't put up a, a scrap that the 45 did, the hole in the dorsal did. But I, I could tell it was a bit bigger, and, and got it over the neck cord. I could see it was a nice fish. It looked like another 30. Um, and it turned out to be a fish called the Ant Common, which is normally about 36 to 39. Um, I lifted her up on the scales and she went 41-14. It's the first time ever 40. And uh, my first ever brace of 40s. Yeah, absolutely over the moon with the session. And, uh, couldn't really have gone better. Um, I ended up with six fish all in all because I ended up with a 27 just after the 41. And it's just one of those sessions that I'm always going to remember. You know, especially late on in the year, everything looks a bit miserable and a little bit bleak. And uh, yeah, six fish and a brace of 40s. Happy days.